I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on parametric equations. In this video, we will see how to convert parametric equation into Cartesian equation, especially when trigonometric functions are involved. So the question here is, convert the following parametric equations to Cartesian equations. The value of t is between 0 and 2 pi. Both are included. You can always pause the video, answer this question, and then look into my suggestions. Now, whenever we have trigonometric functions, especially with sine and cosine, we can follow this strategy. The strategy is that we know that sine square t plus cos square t is equal to 1, right? So, the idea will be to isolate somehow cos and sine t and then when you square and add them up, we'll get 1. And that is how we'll eliminate the parameter t and get the equation in x and y. Correct? So with this strategy, you can actually solve all these questions. I would like you now to pause the video, solve, and then check with my solutions. So let's begin with part A, which is straightforward. We have x equals to 2 cos t, right? So that gives you the value of cos t as equal to x over 2. And we have y equals to 3 sine t. So from here, we can write sine t as equal to y over 3. Now, cos square t plus sine square t is equal to 1, replacing cos with x over 2, and sine with y over 3, we get an equation in which there is no parameter. Right? So this equation, x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 equals to 1, becomes a Cartesian equation where there are no parameters. So I hope the steps are straightforward. Now, the examples are so selected that at times you may have to apply some strategies. So I'll rate this slightly more complicated questions than the other ones, right? So anyway, you try to solve them and then look into my solutions. Let's take the next question now. Convert the following parametric equation to Cartesian. Now this time we have x equals to tan t, right? So basically x is equals to tan t. I could write this as x equals to sine t over cos t, correct? On the other side, we are given y equals to sine t, right? So we could replace sine t with y. So what I could do here is we could write this as cos t equals to sine t over x. Now, since sine t is y, I could also write this as y over x. Is that clear to you? So, so we have two equations here, one relating sine t, the other one uh, relating cos t. Clear? So we have cos t in terms of y over x. So we can now write our equation, which is sine square t plus cos square t is equal to 1. And in this equation, if I substitute y for sine, we get y square plus cos is y over x, we get y square over x equals to 1. So that will become our Cartesian equation. Is that clear to you? Correct? Now, at times, you may be required to write restrictions. Now, x has come in the denominator. There will be a lot of restrictions here. Okay. So, we have to look into. So, as a note here, I will say uh, write restrictions. Right. Since we know x cannot be 0. Okay. Let's take the next example. You can now pause the video and answer part C and D. Part C is 
x is given to us as cos t minus 1, y is given to us as 3 sin t plus 2. So let's rewrite. We have x equals to cos of t minus 1. So we could write this as x plus 1 equals to cos t, right? So we'll call this as our equation number 1. The second one, we are given y equals to 3 sin t plus 2. Now we can isolate, we can write y minus 2 equals to 3 sin t or y minus 2 divided by 3 equals to sin t. We'll call this as our equation number 2. Now as the strategy we discussed in the very beginning, we can write cos square t plus sin square t as equal to 1. As far as cos square t is concerned, we get x plus 1 whole square plus sine square t is y minus 2 over 3 whole square and that is equal to 1. So now this equation is independent of t and therefore that becomes a Cartesian equation for us, right? So we are not going to further simplify. This is good enough for most of our examples. Let's take this last example. Here, we need to convert this parametric equation to Cartesian equation. We are given x equals to 2 plus sine t, and we are also given y equals to 1 plus 2 cos t. Now, for some of the students, cos 2t formulas. Now, cos 2t could be written as cos square t minus sine square t. This is one formula. It could also be written as 2 cos square t minus 1 and can also be written as 1 minus 2 sine square t, right? So the double angle formula for cosine, we have three of them. One of these could be utilized. Okay, now let's again begin with our strategy. We are saying x equals to 2 plus sine t. That means x minus 2 equals to sine t, right? The second equation is, this is first one we have y equals to 1 plus 2 cos 2t. Now, cos 2t, we have 1 here. What we could do is, we could write in terms of sine also and in terms of cosine also. We could do either one of them. Okay, this time I'll follow slightly different strategy. I will write it in terms of uh, sine. Okay, so let's write in terms of cosine. So we got y equals to 1 plus 2 cos 2t two is 2 cos square t minus 1. Okay, so plus 1 minus 1 goes. So we get y equals to 2 cos square t or we get y over 2 is cos square t. Clear? So, so we got like this. Okay. Now we know that, uh, let me use a different ink. Cos square t plus sine square t is 1. So cos square t is y over 2. That is cos square t. And sine t is uh, x minus 2 right? plus x minus 2 whole square is equal to 1. Do you see that? So since we wrote in terms of cos square t, we got y over 2 plus x minus 2 whole square plus 1. Normally, we prefer to write x terms first. So let me write like this, plus y over 2 equals to 1. So that could be the Cartesian equation in this particular case, right? Well, here you could actually isolate the equation also taking y to the right side so we could do some more work here so we could take this to the right side so we get x minus 2 whole square minus 1 equals to y over 2 and now we can write y as equals to 2 times x minus 2 whole square minus 2 so we can explicitly write our equation in terms of y also right so let me rewrite our answer in this particular form, which is uh, more suitable, I think. 
So we can write this as y equals to 2 times x minus 2 whole square minus 2. So from here you can see that it represents a parabola, right? And uh, that is the equation of a parabola. You can find that the vertex of the parabola is at 2 minus 2, right? Anyway, now from here we have a question for you. We are given that t is between 0 to 2 pi for this equation and we have already converted that to a parabola. This equation represents a parabola, correct? Uh, as you can see here. Now, what I uh, want, sorry, I think when I took it on this side, it should have been minus, sorry, sorry, sorry. So the y value will be, this will be minus, right? This will be minus, okay. Uh, because I took y on this side, so it becomes minus. So when you multiply, you multiply by minus 2, right? So we get this kind of an equation. So this is a parabola which opens downwards. So this parabola opens downwards, correct? Okay, this equation. So the question for you is to find, find domain and range of this function and sketch the graph. Okay, so this is your test question. So we have a parametric equation x equals to 2 plus sine t, y equals to 1 plus 2 cos 2t, which you have seen here is, is like a parabola. You need to sketch this parabola and write its domain range. I'll provide you with a link of similar test question which will help you confirm your solution. I hope that makes sense. Feel free to write your comment, share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that will be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.